Mornings at the hound pits, as I recollect, were filled with tranquility. Staring at the tower engulfed in a thick layer of fog, circled by birds at the top, I felt hopeful. Hopeful that the despair that fills the streets of Dunwall will one day be replaced with happiness. Evenings, on the other hand, reminded me of the state of the place. A sun setting down on what was once a glorious city. And the moonlit night, it provided me with some much needed stillness. And as the leaves withered away, I wondered about an uncertain future. But hey, tomorrow was never guaranteed. So my focus was brought back to the present. Dishonored portrays a world full of contrasts. Let us consider this one scenario. There is a party going on. Firecrackers might indicate an occasion worthy of celebration, but I assure you, that is not the case. As you enter the mansion where the festivities are, you see a wastage of resources. Guests eating and drinking while expensive and worthless decorations covers every corner. Meanwhile, just across the street, a royal guard is being eaten piece by piece by a bunch of plague-causing rats. Other citizens don't have enough to eat. Some survive, but many are wrapped up in body bags and thrown away. There are many without a roof over their heads, sleeping in makeshift homes while the rich live in impenetrable fortresses, guarded by dozens of their puppets. Such contrast and disparity is also shown by the use of specific colors. Houses of the poor, common citizens are represented by dull, lifeless shades of gray and brown. The interiors are also shabby and torn apart. You can tell these places are not being very maintained. On the other hand, vibrant and luxurious colors such as red and blue along with expensive decorations define the spaces occupied or even just visited by the powerful authorities. These locations stand out enormously from everything that surrounds it, communicating their importance while diminishing those of the others. Speaking of visuals and storytelling contained within them, Corpses are everywhere, constantly reminding you of the plague that haunts the city. Closed shops and quiet streets with minimal lighting conveys that the place was once lively. Posters and messages written on walls provide insight into the state of dissatisfaction of the citizens, as well as updates on certain events or incidents taking place around, especially those brought about by your hand. Certain areas feel forbidden and are drenched, no pun intended, in despair like the flooded district. The atmosphere here is gothic, dark and gloomy. Derelict buildings surrounded by submerged streets form the crux of this location. And the colors, the colors used to define it are dark and dull, with the exception of some old buildings again reminding you of their past glory. It has been said countless times before that Dishonor looks like a watercolor painting brought to life. And it does. Some of its vistas remind me heavily of William Turner's work, who has already been a topic of one of my essays called Light. Which is a funny full circle coincidence because light in Netherlands is called Licht. And the man who crafted the soundtrack and helped bring Dunwall to life is Daniel Licht. 
unfortunately daniel is no longer with us but i still use present tense while describing his contributions because while playing the game they can still be felt it is in every corner every street every moment of exploration every moment of suspense but like any great soundtrack it never distracts from the experience rather it immerses you fully becoming one with the visuals you forget that this is just a fictional world coded by people in front of computers no you have been teleported to a different place a different time and as the story draws to its conclusion and as the credits start to roll daniel's masterful composition is graced by his nephew john's vocals to create a song that summarizes the world of dunwall filling it with much needed hope and brightening it with some light at the end of the tunnel